Tao Meeting Archives, April 3rd, 2016 The Tao, The Path by Ed Monahan It is time for us to get started with our meeting today. So I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual now. TV. So hello everyone. It's uh, nice to be with you again. Um, I'm doing a little bit of running around today. I got a whole bunch of tasks ahead of me, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to participate. And um, what I wanted to uh, bring up today was something that kind of fits in with the subject matter that I've been discussing over the past several weeks, or at least I feel that it does, or it fits in with me, in that. Um, I think it, perhaps as some of you know, I'd like, to, I'd like to share some of my personal path with you uh, just because I think it bears relevance with respect to what I typically share. Um, <clears throat> for several weeks now I've been discussing our programs and uh, how they at our facility, ECATA, and how that kind of plays into our own physical practice, and then the mental aspects of uh, mindfulness and how that can influence our uh, ability to function in life more effectively. Um, but what I wanted to talk a little bit about today and uh, share with you a bit of my own practice is the spiritual path. And uh, that's why I just have this single slide up uh, right now to discuss. Um, if, if you'll bear with me, I'll give you a little bit of some of my personal background and what led me to my current state of being and practice. And um, I don't know whether that's here or there with respect to anyone else's personal practice, but uh, I think it gives a fairly relevant shape or um, A fairly relevant uh, I think it's a fairly relevant journey because uh, as I've been exposed to the wisdom traditions of the East it's certainly influenced my perspective and um, you know I, I grew up as I think many people in the West have as a, a Christian and um, when I I was baptized as a small child. Uh, my father was uh, Roman Catholic, being Irish and uh, of descent. And my mother was a uh, Protestant, a Presbyterian, and so that was kind of, even at the time that they wed in the, in the 1950s, that was kind of a taboo uh, experience at that time uh, because of the dogma associated with Catholicism it was considered to be problematic at best to marry outside of the church. Um, so I was raised in the Catholic Church, went to um, CCD, and uh, you know had all of the associated issues with mean nuns, and uh, I never had any of the instances of abuse like many people suffer or have suffered. Uh, but I'd say mine was a fairly uh, standard path with respect to being exposed to that particular uh, spiritual and religious path. As I embarked on that path, I, I personally felt that there were assertions being made that were beyond the scope of what felt true to me. And um, 
and and there was a sense of exclusion that seemed to um, negate other philosophies, spiritual practices that didn't that struck a, a sense it gave me a sense of discord that didn't ring true. It just didn't feel right to me. Um, <clears throat> it was really the study of martial arts that began my uh, journey into other philosophies because it certainly wasn't exposed to me in school at that time. And um, and as I began to practice meditation when I was a kid and basically forced to as I was studying karate, um, it, it just there was there was another worldview that began to uh, influence my sphere of thought, and it was one that I was really drawn to. Uh, so I I really continued um, my own spiritual journey, I never really felt, I mean, there are a lot of people who grow up in the Christian world, uh, particularly in Catholicism, that I think uh, become vehemently opposed to it. They, you know, they, they're hurt and uh, feel as though this idea of God or a higher being or Jesus as being something that then is, uh, creates a sense of aversion. Uh, and that was never my experience. I never had that. Uh, I just had a sense that some of these things didn't quite correlate with what felt right to me. And again, I, you know, I'm not going to go. My my attempt this morning is to just share my own personal path a little bit and not really uh, move into uh, any logical deductions or to um, to try to influence anyone in any particular manner, just to share what happened with me. So as I, as I continued down this road, I began to study philosophy, both Western and Eastern, in college. And I was always drawn to the practicality and um, the openness of the Eastern practices. And I was particularly interested in uh, Buddhism because of the, the focus on individual behavior and how we can modify that behavior, the humanist view of being able to uh, create patterns that can allow us to open to something grander. And then as I began to become exposed to Taoism through the study of my Chinese teachers, um, I knew that I wanted to study that path. And, and I had studied that path academically. I knew what it was about. I knew that there was religious Taoism and philosophical Taoism and the dis divisions within Taoist practice and, and the um, uh, various sects of Taoist practice which exist. Uh, so, so I was familiar with all that. But for me, one of the things that always connected with me was when I went out in the woods. Now, when I was a young guy, I was always camping and out in the middle of it. But starting in about eighth grade, I started going to Canada on elongated uh, trips into the wild in southern Ontario. And those trips kind of got longer and longer, and I went every year and, um, you know, eventually started guiding doing those types of trips. And the thing that always gave me the greatest peace was being in the midst of nature. I felt like I belonged. I felt like there was a flow and that I was a part of that flow. That's where I felt connected to God. And there was a harmony that existed that was palpable, that I couldn't find really in anything else. So when uh, I, and, and it resonated with me, the shamanistic practices of the indigenous people of America, 
Native Americans. Uh, the Taoist philosophy of following nature really resonated with me and observing repeatable pa patterns in nature, which can be similar to that of the flow in our lives. And to me, that is a marvel to this day um, because it, it, what I focus on is the commonalities. Um, and that's what's very interesting to me, is to see um, correlations such as a friend of mine, one of my students, who, who was actually a minister at a local church, um, sent me a quote from the Bible from uh, Proverbs. And, and the, the quote is, as he thinks within himself, so he is. Well, this relates directly back to everything that I was sharing over the past several weeks with respect to our patterns of thought. And as we continue to flow down those pathways of thought that we choose, we create a natural default mechanism whereby we think in those same ways. But what actually happens, which is very interesting uh, on a neurological level, is that we actually begin to wear groove-like patterns in the neuropathways of our brain. So, so really, if you think about the observable patterns in nature, what does water do? Uh, even in the strongest of granite, as it over time flows down the path, it wears a groove in it where we see our streams. Well, our brains literally do exactly the same thing. And this is reflective of being able to see a naturally occurring pattern in nature. We are, are organic material born of the earth. So why would our biological mechanism be any different than that which we observe outside of ourselves? What I find very interesting is that there are these quotes from scriptural, from spiritual paths, this being a scripture from the Bible, and we see this over and over in the Bhagavad Gita. We see it in the uh, Analects of Confucius. We see the, this in the, uh, the, the Pali Canon from uh, Buddhist practice and and Jainism, we see, we see it in so many paths, these correlations. And so when I hear, I, did, I just went to a service this morning, uh, a Christian service, which is, from my perspective, quite fundamental, where the assertion was that the only path to God is through Jesus Christ. And my argument with that is if one were never exposed to the teachings of that great master, if you believe Jesus to be the Son of God, um, or whether you don't believe him to be the Son of God, bears no relevance to the fact that if you were never exposed to those teachings whatsoever because of the the, the geography in which you were raised, could it possibly be that a supreme being would toss you out because of not being exposed to that? This does not ring true to me. It, uh, it, it doesn't feel right. Now, this is only my personal opinion. Uh, my personal belief set is that I have explored Christian teachings and I'm a part of that belief. Uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to find uh, Yikuan Dao uh, in 2005 and it resonated with me immediately. When uh, my wife and I went, we took, I think we had the kids with us, I can't remember, but uh, the first day that I sat down for Darius' class and he mentioned about the initiation ritual, 
I said, I'm in, let's go. And we were initiated that day with, uh, with Janice and Derek being our uh, introducers to the path, our sponsors. And, um, and from that point forward, I've had the great fortune of being able to learn the true Tao from an internal perspective rather than just an academic perspective. And to my delight, there is no exclusion. I can follow a Christian path. I can follow a Buddhist path. I studied uh, for many years with a great Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist master, Lama Gyatso, and took refuge within uh, the Buddhist faith. But at the same time, my personal belief is that it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. I can be Taoist. I can be Buddhist. I can be Christian. I can believe that Jesus is truly the Son of God. And this is my personal belief. Now, should I impose that upon others? Certainly not. And I should be in open acceptance of others' beliefs as well. But this is the point. Uh, I, quite honestly, one of the reasons I was so drawn to Bruce Lee is because his philosophy was that there are many paths and that we choose ultimately what resonates with us, what works for us as individuals based on our personal preference, our natural predispositions in the case of martial arts on a physical level and a psychological level. But yeah, it, we are beings where we've come from something. Uh, whether you choose to believe that is the void or whether you choose to believe it is a an entity, whatever the case may be, I suspect that um, once we go back to that, we'll have a bit better perception of what that is. What it said in many paths and traditions is that we've just forgotten in our current incarnation and in our in this material manifestation. We have to awaken and open to the truth of what we actually are. This is the process of enlightenment. So that is my aspiration. It's to follow these paths and to um, follow the teachings of those who are certainly wiser than I and to try to glean from that some sense of truth and merge that with my personal experience of truth, of what feels right within me. So the thing that I found so wonderful about Yi Kuan Dao is that it is the ability to uh, be open acceptance of multiple paths. Uh, Sanatanan and, and Hinduism, the, you know, the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda, the teachings of uh, Oh gosh, there are so many, and there's truth in all of this. And to think that it is somehow mutually exclusive, that there's a corner, there's a market that's cornered on truth by one individual path seems terribly limited to me. Uh, almost as limited as when uh, we as a race, only several hundred years ago, felt as though that the Earth was truly at the center of the universe. Well, clearly, as we look outward and we see the immensity of our known universe, uh, it would be absurd to think that there was not life somewhere else and that this is part of a great oneness, whatever that might be and however that might be defined. And so... Thou, God, emptiness, whatever word we place on that, it's just a word in the way that we've devised to be able to communicate a concept that our brains don't even have the capacity to truly wrap around. So uh, I hope that is and somehow, somehow to you uh, relevant and that it may strike a chord with some of you with your own personal journey and path. And I think what I what I hope to pass on is the a sense of openness and 
release of judgment when it comes to our own personal exploration because what resonates with each person is so different based on our individual past, but yet at the same time, so much the same, that we yearn to go back to the one. And, uh, and we have different ways, as my teacher had told me, there are many paths to the same destination. And we find the one that's appropriate for us, or perhaps more than one. But either way, it allows us to ultimately find peace. And when we can do that, I think we can safely say that we've embarked on the proper path. So thank you guys for listening to me ramble a little bit this morning. I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Let's go ahead and do the meeting and the ritual, everybody. CD. Okay, everybody, we are done. Join the Dow Meeting Live to participate in the questions and commentary. For more information, go to http colon forward slash forward slash Taoism.net forward slash Tao forward slash connect dash online.